coming up. A new spa is coming to Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa. Once again, bringing back spa to the name of Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa. Uh, There's going to be new entertainment coming to Frontierland and the Golden Horseshoe, answering our questions about what would they do with that. Plus, we're going to talk all about the Oogie Boogie Bash at Disney California Adventure. From the Bob Varley Studio and One Point in Southern California, this is the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is episode 783 of the Diz Unplugged Disneyland edition for the week of September 25th, 2019. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by dreamsunlimitedtravel.com, experts at helping you plan the perfect vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. And also by Disboards.com. Join over a million Disney fans discussing their Disney vacation, the latest news, rumors, and so much more. Visit Disboards.com and join the discussion today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Dis Unplugged Disneyland Edition. I'm your host, Craig Williams. Hopefully you can notice my Southern California tan that I'm rocking right now. And I'm not. It was mostly sunburned the entire time, and then now it's just right back to paleness but uh, and if you're listening to this you can't see my tan at all so they there's also it. that yeah hey i'm joined alongside by my co-host ryan the rhino clavin hello also rocking that socal tan i am bro he, you did catch a wave so uh it totally looking good on you totes bro totes and then back on the controls lived in socal for a point in time no That's tan true. right now no i mean tan. he's got the orlando tan got cory fiascanaro to all that come to this happy show welcome Blah. I mean, that is a catchphrase. It's <laughs> it a catchphrase good, for though. sure. Yeah. Yes. And then you might have noticed that I said point in Southern California, not <laughs> point. Uh, unfortunately, Tom Bell is having internet trouble. So today we are only joined by Morgan Lamone from that undif- well, undisclosed <laughs> beachfront location next to a highway uh, in Beach. Southern California. Hi. <laughs> oh, hey. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, guys. So welcome back. I know we uh, didn't have our show last week, obviously, as we prepared you ahead of time. We were out in California to take in a lot of the Halloween happenings at Disneyland Resort, plus uh, the very first Oogie Boogie Bash. We were there on opening night uh, because we weren't able to have a show. We uh, we tried to get some content out for you already, and you noticed some sprinklings of stuff coming out. Hopefully, you already had the chance to watch our our in the moment review of Oogie Boogie Bash that Rhino got up uh, the very following day after we got home. So uh, I don't I don't think a lot of people have, but now's your chance to go watch it after you're done watching this show. So that's what part of this show is going to be is talking about Oogie Boogie Bash and you know other general highlights. I think we have. For from our our trip out there we have plenty of content to come from that trip uh, in the future though but now that a little time has passed since that initial review that we did of oogie boogie bash i i i think i'm i'm going to be a lot nicer towards it than i was probably in the video that we you did that night video. i wasn't mean but it definitely it, w- it was a mixed bag for me that night there was it was more positive than negative but i think since then i am i've become a lot fonder for that party and i think i enjoyed myself far more than i i thought i did that night and for for morgan she's had the chance to experience it two more times since uh that initial night so she's definitely now one of the uh, chief experts on the oogie boogie bash out there i'd say and yeah we're gonna have a lot of fun with this it's gonna be a good time it's so. gonna be a oh uh, no I was going to say bash. I was it's like, ah, oh, no, that's not even creative. A monster bash? I thought you were going to say it's a good, 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 good time. That's what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> it's going to be good, good. Is that Black Eyed Peas? No, uh, Mickey's Mixed Magic. Oh, it's going to oh, be a great. good, 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 good time. Close. I was close. To the east, yeah. <laughs> you know. 
but I'm, I'm, the west, right to- yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep singing on that. We've got we got a couple of things to go over before we get to Oogie Boogie Bash. So why don't we go over that? So uh, first up, not exciting news for everyone, but again, I'm excited for it because it is now completing the name of Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa. Rhino, why don't you run us over? It? Oh, I don't even know. Okay, so there is a question. <laughs> there is questions about the pronunciation. I say Tanaya could be Tanea. Could be, well, those are it. Why don't we know. spell it out for the people at T-E-N-A-Y-A. home? T E N A Y A. Okay. So I think that looks like Tanea or Tanaya, but uh, Morgan, how would you say it? Uh, Tanea, I guess. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Tanea, we should have typed this into one of those, like, how to pronounce uh, we should have. things. But well, whatever. and then reading the article, too, it's like, the way Tom wrote it, he said, and I, it felt like it's been at least two months now since Mandara closed down, but he says just several weeks ago. Hmm. Interesting. It felt, I mean, yeah. it, even if it's been a month, it's felt like long. I don't care about spas. You will never uh, listen to a podcast from me called Spa Talk. It's the least interested thing I'm in. Uh, uh, it should be called Spa Bra. Spa Bra. Yeah, <laughs> it, you're not going to get that. I despise spas. I, I know there's a person in the room who enjoys it. I think even Rhino could enjoy it to an extent. Uh, Maybe Morgan enjoys it. Uh, a massage can be helpful for your back. That's the thing. It could. Yeah. I think it's a pyramid scheme. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Because it starts off with the massage and then it's... Uh, they're trying to offer you products, and before you know it, they're like, well, sign up for more products, and then maybe you could sell these products to 10 of your friends, and 10 of your friends could <laughs> that never happened to buy me. these products. It's, I, Didn't that I don't happen to Linda on Bob's Burgers or something? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I believe it did. It, you know, it's, it all goes back to Mark Twain and, and Tom Sawyer when he gets the kids to paint the fence well, and then gets more kids yeah, to paint geez, the fence. Yes. The original pyramid scheme. Let me ask you, when was the last time you went to get a massage? Uh, I have, it's been about six years since I was forced into my first massage. And then every random occasion, Pete will have people come in and just do, do chair, chair massages. massages yeah. And I can't say no, but it makes me so uncomfortable. And I never feel better after. I usually actually feel worse. Um, just because I don't. You're stressed out the entire time? Yeah, I don't care for it. Yeah. I, I, I just, I'm, I feel fine. Anytime someone touches me, I actually feel worse afterwards. But, okay, so me. what I would recommend, try out senses. Uh, try out a... Uh, That's what I had. Ship shape. At, at the beach club, it's so good. I, I was on I was on the Disney Cruise Line when I had my my spa treatment. Oh, okay. Hated every second oh, of it. No. Yeah. Well, so talk I would about like this to one. read about this new spa. Yeah. Uh, so the new spa, which will open in the former spa location near the G oh, God, blah, nor near the G C H Craftsman Bar, is being designed by Walt Disney Imagineers and is inspired by the spirit of nature and California heritage. You can look for a full service menu of treatments, including facials, massages, and other salon services, all provided in a serene setting. Um, there's some concept art in the article on WDW Info if you want to check that out. But it features that uh, craftsman architecture. Craftsman is the name of the word here at uh, Grand Californian. They should just call it the Grand Craftsman. Um, there's going to be a water feature, a stained glass window uh, with the rising sun on it. But there's no uh, opening date. I'm guessing if they're sharing this art... Um, well, I guess it's just concept yeah. art. So I mean, it does say it will open spring 2020. The Tenya Tenaya... Tenaga. Tenaya. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, the Stone Spa. It's not a very big area over there for yeah. it. So it's... Names.com. <laughs> <laughs> Tenaya. 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 Okay. There we go. There we go. <laughs> there we, go. we got it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, like like I said, this uh, we spent more time actually talking about our viewpoints on spas than uh, the actual story on it. But I, you know what? I. Good for Grand California, not getting stale and constantly being revitalized. Uh, some good changes made, obviously, like when they revitalized the rooms uh, last year and so. Oh, and yeah, that great. room, great refurb on that. Uh, and other bad refurbs would include, uh, well, not really refurbs, but just being added, the Craftsman Bar. Oh, there's a fun video coming out for yeah. that. Yeah, that w- that's not really. Yeah, yet, when right? is that coming up? <laughs> that, that is. Fun. Yes, that will. I still haven't decided on that one how we're going to do it. I feel like 
the experience was so bad that not only will we release the vlog of our experience, but then also make it kind of like a little small segment at the end of a show. Uh, it's it's yeah because I feel like we need to explain because in the video we're so mad in the yeah. beginning and because we recorded the <laughs> intro after we had already eaten, so we were like trying to pretend to be positive. But the I, when I rewatched it, I was like, oh. We are all no. very upset in this video. Well, so. here's the problem. We weren't <laughs> pretending to be positive because we don't pretend to be positive. That is literally the backbone of our entire no, site. No, pr- not pretend to be positive. I meant I meant optimistic is when you're going oh, yes. like, to be like, oh, it's the opening video. Yes. Not like I didn't mean like pretend. No, I, I you, you are word. correct. Yeah. Yes, it was a it was a circumstance where we recorded the intro after. So we yeah. had to be like. Can't wait we're to see how it was. Going but. in, trying this for the first time. <laughs> Can't wait to see what happens. And we're just like, Ugh, yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, like, we we need a full breakdown. Like we need to be able to pinpoint where everything went wrong. <laughs> and of course, the worst part is, and we'll get to that when we we talk about it. But apparently, Morgan and Tom have had several awful uh, awful you, experiences uh, there, and no one decided mm-hmm. to share that with us. You can hear me yelling about it in the video. <laughs> I took okay, it out. But. Okay, I. I told Rhino, I believe, before we went in there, like when he said that, Craig, you wanted to do the review, I was like, oh, man, I don't want to go there. It, it wasn't just me who wanted to do the review. Every time we <laughs> remembered it, Rhino was like, oh, we've got to eat there. Because there was like the pictures, the, they look, oh. I, I, they, they lured me in with avocado toast that then and you Tom didn't even Bell get it. Got. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Well, we, the review consists of food we we got that we didn't necessarily want or a second wanted, take, and yeah. it also involved a timer. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. That was it. Was very interesting. So, uh, you know, looping that back in, some good changes have been made as Grand Californian has been revitalized. Some bad changes, but uh, I, I'm just glad that they're doing it and they're not holding back on that. So, uh, very, very exciting to see that the future of, I already forgot how to say it again. Tanaya. T- Tanaya. Tanaya Stone <laughs> Spa. So, moving on to our next news story, we have the new entertainment that was announced for Frontierland and the Golden Horseshoe. So, uh, starting this fall, I believe, actually, already this week now, if it hasn't debuted yet, it will be soon, a strolling magician will arrive oh dear. with demonstrations of sleight of hand and other tricks, and you can find this master of magic, in quotes, on the streets of Frontierland <laughs> on the Mark Twain steamboat. Oh my, this or, seems like somebody who's going to steal your wallet. <laughs> or also mixing in with patrons inside the Golden Horseshoe throughout the fall season, so... How do you, how do we feel about that strolling magician? I'm glad it's not a strolling piano. I hate those things. <laughs> what? Weren't they doing that at Disney Springs for a while? Uh, yeah, it was yeah. that piano on wheels. Oh, it still happens, oh, and geez. I dislike it. Every I mean, you're time. like the music's coming for me. <laughs> I enjoy the idea of live music, and I I love that, and I do understand that it's not it's a way to around, spread though. it. Out. <laughs> There's something about putting a piano on a cart and just moving it around. It creeps me out. So. And then people will come up to the poor piano person and be like, um, where's Uniqlo? <laughs> like, they're clearly playing this they're piano, right in the middle trying of piano to drive man. their car. And they're, seeing, and they're like, it's down to the left. <laughs> like, um, a strolling music. Well, the thing about the mu- ma- magician, mu- the magician, the yeah. music magician, um, the magician is, so there, we have a roaming magician at Disney Springs. Um, and he's great. I love, I I think he's the nicest person ever. He we talk every time I'm there. Um, and Muro, if anyone goes to see him, say hello to him. Um, he'll do some tricks that will blow your mind. Um, but he's just kind of himself. Like when he goes around, you know, he's got his name tag on, and uh, he's he's always dressed very nice. But it's not like it's not like a character. I feel like this is going to be like a character of if it's where it is like with Mark Twain the Mark Twain and and Golden Horseshoe I feel like it's going to look like an elixir salesman from like the Wizard of Oz or something <laughs> I, I get what you're saying on that yeah the the original yeah. the original uh, people who ripped you off back in the old wild west I I don't know I I love magic. We uh a fall, one oh of the things we gosh, said we forgot Well it wasn't that we forgot I wasn't so one of the things we said before we were leaving for this trip that we wanted to do to do a video of it is actually go into the magic shop and buy a magic trick and learn how to do it and make a full video about that. And then uh, we walked in there and 
first off, I was blown away that all these simple magic tricks are all like twenty five dollars and up, yeah. which I, I, I can spend money on stuff if it's really interesting, but. I don't know if I'm willing to invest that much, like five trips to Taco Bell in one magic. Trip. <laughs> that's that's not really for me, but I love the idea of magic. And, you know, it's the fact that he is going to be moving around and like he might be on the steamboat. Like I, I that to me says it, it definitely is that like the close up magic that I do enjoy. Mm-hmm. And I think it'll definitely sell more of those uh, highly priced magic tricks because I remember like as a kid um, going to Newport, Rhode Island, which I'm actually going back to soon, seeing somebody like do the magic tricks like that made me infatuated and want to go to the magic shop there and just buy all the things that I saw the magician do. So, yeah, I that is definitely a way that they can pump money into that shop. Um, I think the only thing, or I'm really excited about the magic tricks and all that stuff in Frontierland, but I think the only problem that could possibly come up is it gets a little congested in that one area in Frontierland. So depending on where he's stopping and like a crowd is being drawn around him, I think that's like the only Mm. thing that could potentially be a problem. That is is a very good point. So Frontierland is, it easily congests up. So uh, that hopefully... Hopefully they have ideas like maybe keep them closer off to like uh, the the rancho, and uh, mm-hmm. and then obviously inside Golden Horseshoe and on the steamboat. Those are definitely places where he can kind of be confined to do his sorcery and such. But sorcery. also in uh, Golden Horseshoe, they're going to be welcoming a pair of piano players. So these pianists will come ready to challenge each other, each another to dueling piano showdowns as they take turn playing iconic numbers from the Old West. And they'll take requests from the audience, which that's where I'm confused by, like, Give me baby one more time. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, I mean, people love doling pianos. I enjoy a good doling do piano not care session. For doling piano. This is where you're out on doling oh, pianos. I, yeah, I mean, give me baby one more time. But I will not go to Jelly Rolls because it gives me a migraine the second I step in the door. Because I find that especially when you're on Disney property, they're just people slamming on the pianos, and I hate that. I, I like pianos and I like yeah. pianists, but I I don't like. Uh, I don't like that dueling piano. I feel like it's always very, it's just so, oh, it's too darn loud. I, no, I, see, I love dueling pianos. I love jelly rolls. I don't go to jelly rolls very often because, A, the, uh, there's never the, a jelly the cover, roll there. The cover charge. Um, it's, I, a lot of times I'm like, I don't really want to pay to do this. It's, and, and not that you don't get your entertainment out of there if you stay long enough, but, just for me, that's usually the mindset I'm in. After you have a couple drinks, that changes immediately. But uh, usually, that's where I'm at with it. And then the next thing I, I don't really care for with like a Jelly Rolls place, it, Disney does not want them to sing inappropriate songs. And I'm not saying that that makes or breaks the situation, but it's then like you get led into this scenario where I feel like every time I'm in there, I only hear the same 30 songs over and over again. Jeez, and, how much time are you spending in there? You listen to 30 Oh, songs. when I was on my college program, you know, and you got in free with your cast oh, member yeah, IDs, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was... I can't tell you how many times we went, but uh, yeah, it's like it's all it's like okay. Well, will you play? Will you play uh, Elton John? Will you play Billy Joel? Will you play the same stuff over and over? And then the one guy always plays the Rainbow Connection, and yeah. like it just it feels very repetitive. But anyways, that's that's my feelings on that. And here the confusion part is, as you pointed out with Baby, one more time. They'll take requests from the audience. Are they only going to take requests if you're like, can you play me Oh Susanna? Can you play <laughs> yeah. me Home on the Range? Where where are we drawing the line? On, Is, didn't the, she die in Oh Susanna? Isn't that what it's about? She fell in the river or something? It's been a while since I've listened to a lot of these American standard fairs, so I'm not going no, to sit no, here they, and act like an expert. They sing The one they sing in Hoop to Do, I didn't realize, was about the girl dying. Oh, my darling say, Clementine? Oh, yeah, Clementine falls in. Sorry, Susanna, you probably yeah. made it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that is the weird part, because you're like, I, I think the piano part is definitely themed in there, but then you're like, eh. Screw it. We'll play whatever music we want. Yeah. Like Susanna is more or less crying for you, and coming from Alabama don't, don't with the you banjo cry for on me. Came Come from, from Alabama with the banjo on my knee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
She'll be coming round the mountain. Yeah. She so is that what we're going to have to request or look for our future podcast about folk music from yeah. the days of yore? I'll be honest. It confuses me, but I am as much as I would like a full review happening in the Golden Horseshoe. What if what I if, think like, I'm OK with this? Morgan's there and she's like, hey, can you play Rotten to the Core? I would love that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I can go in when they come and see what kind of songs they play and let you guys know about it. All right. No, you're going to have to. I want you to go and have a full list and just read off every single song from The Descendants. <laughs> I'll try that. You guys should give me some other songs that see if they can test to see if they'll play it. Like, hit me maybe one more time. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. I mean, like, do you know anything from the Marilyn Manson Library? <laughs> Seems appropriate, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's, uh, you know what? So that's coming to Frontierland. No worries. Strolling magicians and doling pianos and golden horseshoe. Better than nothing happening at all. Oh, in no, a, yeah, in a world full of cuts, I'm glad that we, we have some additions in a way. Yeah. So moving on to our next story, uh, the, the briefest of entertainment changes happening. So obviously... Uh, obviously Halloween will have to come to an end at some point and the Halloween scream fireworks will have to come to an end. Do not worry. Mickey's mix magic will be there in the interim for a very, 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 very short time. Uh, specifically it will be shown only from November 1st through November 3rd. So wow. get your ears on for two days. I uh, three. <laughs> Three, <laughs> November 1st, November 2nd, November 3rd. There it I is. am a big fan of this show, so if, if, I, if I lived in California, I'd be popping over to watch it. I feel like it's better in these short periods to bring back Mickey's Mixed Magic rather than have mm-hmm. nothing at all or to, like, like I would never want it to be like, okay, well, we're going to bring back... Uh, we're gonna bring back Disneyland forever, but for three days. Like, well, you know what's weird is like, so when we were out in Disneyland this last trip, they were doing the um, uh, what's their Hollow Scream? Halloween Scream. Halloween Screams. Um, show, and they were saying that they only do the fireworks on like the weekends, mm-hmm. but. I'm watching it, and the projections that they're showing, like on the castle, are the same projections they've always kind of shown on the balloon. I think. I mean, I could be wrong, but they're not. They're not projections like, like, um, like Mickey's Mix Magic projections or Disneyland Forever projections. So they're not the type of projections that stand alone without fireworks. That's all I could think while I was watching it. Where I was like, why mm. even do this? I disagree with that. I think it's definitely an upgrade from the very first time that I saw the fireworks, which, granted, was six years ago. So a lot of time has changed between then. I'm sure they've upgraded the show in the years since. But the first time I saw it, it was still like back when they didn't even have projections on the castle. It was just like the lights that they would Yeah, but it project, was, there was like, always the projection on the balloon. Yes, and the projection on the balloon, when I saw it, I I remember Jack, I remember Maleficent. I remember Oogie Boogie, and Oogie, Oogie. was the bats. Yeah, those were the only three. There was no extra projections on it from what I remember. I would have to go back and look at my video, but it's to me, the fact that there was solid projections on the castle, there was projections up and down main street, like you would have for mix magic, Disneyland forever, Pixar fest fireworks. And also basic. I feel like they didn't do it. It doesn't have to be like a kitty cat. It doesn't have to be, but it's also, we didn't watch it on Main Street, so true, I can't true. say what the experience was like watching it on Main Street. I can say from the first time we watched it, the first night where we had the castle in front of us, and then also we could see the top of the Matterhorn to see the projections on there, too. Mm. I really liked that. So I thought that the projections in Halloween Screams were enough to to make it interesting, but you're right. It's not... Morgan. It's not a show like Mickey's Mix Magic have where you, it was. Have, hold on, hold on. Wait, let, ask her if she's seen hold, without the fireworks. Hold on, I'm just trying to say it's different for Halloween Screams that is a staple show that's been there for years versus Mickey's Mix Magic that was developed from the ground up true, to be utilized true, true, true. in that way. So now, Morgan. Um, I haven't seen it with fireworks, oh. um, but I do really like that Mickey's Mixed Magic, you can see it without the fireworks and like you won't even notice that there isn't any fireworks where I feel like if you have seen the ho- or hollows or Halloween screams, it's um, you need the fireworks for it to give it that little. Oomph. But do you guys, I, 
I should I should know this, but um, Zero out when there is no fireworks when he flies across the sky. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure he still does. I I okay. I think the only element that's removed from the show is the fireworks. Yeah. I to me, I again, we didn't watch it without the fireworks. I would say Zero has to be there because it's they specifically the story, mentioned right? yeah. Zero being there. Mm-hmm. So if Zero just wasn't there, that's kind of awkward. You'd be like but, just looking around for him everywhere. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess they could they could have him in a projection, but I don't know. Listen, I it, the one thing I will say with that, uh, I'm happy Mixed Magic is coming back for that mm-hmm. short bit. I hope it keeps being used like that. Halloween Screams, I will say, even though the projections up and down Main Street might not be designed, it might be an afterthought in order to like be able to show it on weeknights without uh, the fireworks being involved. Halloween Screams, it was so refreshing. It's basically the exact same music that was used for our last fireworks show here in Walt Disney World for the Halloween party, uh, Hallow Wishes, except without all of the dumb parts that I hated about that show with the ding dong who shows up now. <laughs> like, it's just all the good music. And listening to it, I was like, God, this really is a tight show. It's a really... The music that they had for for Halloween Scream and and Hallow Wishes, it it's good music. It just it's I, I think Disneyland did it better with their version. So I would hate to see that go away and no, I wouldn't. And I don't be want to mutilated. Go away. So I while I enjoy the new Halloween fireworks we have on our coast here, after seeing our Halloween fireworks plus uh, Villainous, which we'll get to very quickly here. Mm. I am starting to lose faith in a lot of uh, interesting concepts for Halloween moving into the future. So a lot of a lot of choices being made by a lot of yeah yeah choices are being made in terms of live these these nighttime spectaculars, and I, I sometimes I think a little less goes a lot further. I, I yeah. I, I'll save it for when we talk about yeah. Lewis, but I agree with you about well, that. Well, and we'll sure. get there in a second, and I guess this ties into it. But uh, moving in uh, to, to our last part of this is that uh, buttons, buttons everywhere, buttons galore for button? mobile ordering. Tons of new places have been added for mobile, or even more than the last time where we said more buttons were being given away for mobile orders. Uh, but the big thing is for pass holders right now, uh, there is a new annual pass holder exclusive button featuring Oogie Boogie that you can get while supplies last at the Tomorrowland Expo Center and Star Wars Launch Bay. And I know what you're thinking. Why in the world wouldn't they be giving away your Oogie Boogie button at Disney California Adventure where the Oogie Boogie Bash is happening? And that's a question that I'm... They do give away a button there, though. Then why don't... Because I, I got a button. I got a magnet and a button during the party. So I oh. don't know if that's only during the party or what... The, well, it must be only during the party because I think it was kind of near where Goofy's Sky School is. So well, During the day, according to our article written by Tom it, Bell, only two AP days ago. the AP is. The so. AP corner is located over there. That's yeah. why. Well... I think that... Um, I know what you're talking about about is only for Oogie Boogie Bash because it has uh, Oogie Boogie Bash on it. Oh, there you go. So I think there's like an additional um, oh. Halloween time AP button in addition at Star Wars Launch Bay. Interesting. Well, <laughs> Rhino is happy that he added his magnet to his ever-growing collection of magnets that he can't hang anywhere because he doesn't have a refrigerator with... Who magnetism. makes a refrigerator that is not magnetic? Uh, ju- <laughs> who buys the refrigerator? Stupid. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a different discussion for a different day, but we're going to move on to our featured discussion here, and that is recapping one more time for you the Oogie Boogie Bash at Disney California Adventure, the, the premier year for Oogie Boogie Bash. Not the first time there has been a, a Halloween party happening at Disney California Adventure, but this is definitely the first fright of Oogie Boogie Bash going on at the park here. And of course, we were there on the very first night, and as a joint group, we experienced basically everything. The only thing I'll, I that night that we didn't really get to experience was actually meeting a lot of the rare characters uh, there, but we did, we saw them, but I we did, didn't. I did not see uh, with my own eyes, but somebody did. The the others did uh, Chip and Dale as rescue rangers and yeah. Baloo in his tailspin outfit with the pirate guy whose name I can't remember right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I mean, 
Baloo, definitely you don't see him as much in Tailspin, but Chippendale Rescue Rangers are being thrown out for like at least twice a year now. So to me, they're starting to lose their rarity. But well, I know that not, the Kingdom Hearts characters were like the big yeah. deal. So we'll get to all of that there. But yeah, so rare characters are definitely a part. Of, I guess we could just start with the rare characters. But uh, before we, we jump into there, let's just say it flat out right up front for the three of us in this room that got to attend it. Where are we landing at with this party? Um, how's it feel? Ladies first. Okay. Um, I really enjoyed it. I didn't know what to expect from it coming from Disneyland over to California Adventure. But overall, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, there is places where it could be improved. I, um, all three nights that I went, I was able to get everything I wanted to done. So I feel like there could I, I always feel when you're at a party, you could there's always like that one thing you didn't get to. So I kind of like that yeah, there's, you can get everything done in one night. So overall, I, I liked it. I uh, Don Carnage is the name of the character. Mm-hmm. Um, I I agree with Morgan. It was nice to be able to go through the party and be like, I did get to kind of experience most of it. You know, if if had we not been working, I probably could have met maybe not every character I wanted to, but I could have met like one or two of them or something like that. You know, or a couple. I I don't even say one or two, but um, I I. What I really enjoyed is just, again, the Halloween time and that oogie boogie feeling, even when you're not at the party. Like, it just, when you're not at the party, it's everywhere in the park. But when you're at the party, like, the lighting and the sounds and the music is just playing everywhere. And what I really loved is, like, the selection of music that they were playing everywhere, too, because you had, like, you know, Don't Fear the Reaper. So it wasn't just, it wasn't just Disney songs. There was Mm -hmm. other, like, Halloween songs that were being played. And then it, it, like... I, I don't know if it was watching the 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 um, descendants the descend dance party or not, but it was that like guy kind of really got me in that that spirit of being like okay we're moving we're hopping we're dancing. I I feel like the the treat trails were cool too. I really liked how they had like the characters up, but I mean not to go into too many yeah. specifics. I I did I just I felt like um, it's something that I would pay out of my own pocket to go back to this year if there were still um, openings for it. And yeah. I have not said that for a while. I, not that I dislike ours, but this one I was like, okay, this is like my speed. Yeah, I, I that's where hindsight and, you know, the first party we did was for work, so it was a lot different. Like, one, I'll give an example for it, like the Mickey's Trick and Treat show that was a dance party for kids. It did have a show aspect to it, but it was very much for, I would say, kids six and younger. And I may, I'll even stretch it to eight and younger that would get the most enjoyment out of it. But for me, I waited in line for about 10 minutes for the show and then got in the room and it was about another 10 minutes sitting there and yeah. waiting for it to start. And then it was a 10 minute show. So 30 minutes of my party because we were there for work was solely just waiting for this one thing yeah. that on a normal night, not that I wouldn't want to see it to be interested, but like, no, I'm not. If I would have went a second night, I'm not going back to Mickey's Trick and Treat. I'm spending no, that no, time yeah. waiting in line to meet a character or doing doing something else. So, uh, but that's where like I, I really, as we flew home and in the days that I've been talking to other people about it, I, I do think that this is one of one of the better all around parties because. Really, if you stop and plan out what you want to do, I think you can get everything done. And that's very rare for a Disney hard ticket party. You know what I like, too, is it felt like it had a little bit more diversity than the party I'm used to here. Because when I think of the party here, I think stage show, fireworks, parade. Yeah, and there are other offerings, but that's that, those are the big marquee items. Yeah. And here we had they had two showings of the of villainous, and um, so there was the parade too. I also like that the parade shorter there, but like I, it was one of those where like I felt like there was more. Okay, they had the descend dance for kids. We had the parade. We had the villainous. You had the the trail that you could walk, so it was kind of spooky. Yeah. But then there was characters. But I also liked that it wasn't all isolated together. It was very spread out, so yes. you. Really really could roam the entire park. Yeah, I, I agree with that, that as well, too. So let's get into it. 
we mentioned the rare characters. the the big The big two are the Kingdom Hearts characters. So this was pretty much a, a surprise for everyone, I guess, unless you actually worked there that they were they were going to be coming. So it was Donald and Goofy in their Kingdom Hearts outfits. If you don't know what I say, because I've said Kingdom Hearts now three times, Kingdom Hearts is a very popular video game that uh, kind of blends the worlds of like Final Fantasy, but with Disney characters and Disney worlds. And it's they've they've made so many of them. I hope you would have heard of it by now, but I understand that everyone's not a gamer, so a lot of people might not be aware, but very rare costumes. Uh, The characters, I think they've only been out a handful of times, and so it was a very big deal. The line for them was very long at the beginning of the party. By the end, it definitely calm down to where I was like, okay, there's at any given time, there's 30 people waiting for them. Uh, but you never know which one you're going to get. Like any character meet and greet might yeah. be a quick change to Donald from goofy or vice versa, but very, very cool. Something that, uh, if you never know the next time they'll be out. So if you're going to this party and meeting the, these characters in their costumes is something you want to see, I would definitely make a priority to that. Cause I don't think they're going to be used very often in the future. No, I, I uh, yeah, I think it was one of those. Somebody was saying that this might be their first domestic. I think first domestic. Yeah. Um, what did you? Why did you look at me? Because I'm talking about characters. No, I. I think I just accidentally looked at you. Oh, okay. Morgan, I thought you fill wanted in me the to silence. say something. No. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So um, at near Grizzly River Run, they had Governor Rad. Cliff, Sean Yu, Prince John, Frollo, uh, the Sheriff of Nottingham, Queen of Hearts, and the Big Bad Wolf, which some of those are rare. Some of them you see during the day at the Disneyland side, but I um, personally got to meet uh, Frollo and uh, Governor Radcliffe, and that was a really fun uh, meet and greet as well. Yeah, no, those those were Do you cool. Do to go down the rest of the list of Well, yeah, I mean, we, we already mentioned okay. Chip and... We mentioned um, chip- in the front of the park. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I think we're having connection issues. We're all good. We're all good. We're all good. Keep going. Sorry, it's cutting in and out. <laughs> okay, so in front of Carthay Circle, there was Pinocchio with the Blue Fairy, and then on the opposite sets, it would be Snow White and Dopey, which Dopey's kind of rare, kind of not. Mm-hmm. Um, they had um, near in Pacific Wharf, they had Kim Possible and Ron Stoppable, which I got to meet, and that was a really fun meet and greet, and also Phineas and Ferb. And then we also talked about uh, Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers and Blue from Tailspin. And uh, I think those were the, the big characters that they had, or the and, rare ones. And there was also, like, Incredibles and stuff. Sorry. Oh, no. no. And then I was going to say, I know, like, in the in the Hollywood land, when you and I were waiting for the party, like, Loki started roaming around out there and stuff, too. Mm-hmm cool stuff there i i think for me the big one was actually seeing pinocchio with the blue fairy i've yes. never seen the blue fairy before i never have so been. that was neat for pretty much for the rest of them though it was pretty like yeah okay and then kingdom hearts i love kingdom hearts and i loved seeing donald and goofy in their outfits not enough to wait in line for them because that line was pretty intense all night but uh yeah but it was cool seeing them it, i like that they brought out this Variety, this unique variety. Well, I also like that it wasn't all the same type of meet and greet. So you had those ones that you did the meet and greet, but then in the treat trails, you had the other five, which yeah. were, um, you know, Oogie Boogie himself, Dr. Facilier, uh, the Mad Hatter, um, the Snow Queen, and Maleficent. And it was cool because I. It, it, they, as you went through, you could kind of wait for a sec. I mean, they'll rush you through, but. I, I guess it's kind of dependent on what time you were hitting it because when I saw the Mad Hatter, there wasn't really any waiting, but I also like tucked myself like up into a corner where it was clear people could easily go around me. I was in an area where nobody was going to walk through. And I watched him interact with people, you know, obviously to film it. And, and it was really, I thought that was really cool. But then when I went in to see where Oogie Boogie was, he was inside of the animation building. And I thought it was awesome because all of those big giant screens they have inside of there, if you've never walked in there because you're like, I don't want to draw anything, I'd still say go in there because it's a really awesome building. And they had his, like, all, like, his dice and cards and everything were all on the screens. And his meet and greet was hilarious. I'm not a meet and greet, but his, like, walkthrough area. Yeah. But that all, that area also had an area, uh, another area where you could kind of stand back and be out of the trail and watch him, I, too. I did not do the Mad Hatter one, so I can't speak on that. But 
uh, the other four that I did, the only one that I feel like the cast members there were very good about letting you stand and watch was the one that actually created the most bottleneck, and that was uh, the Evil Queen. Everyone was just standing along watching, but because she was on the trail that leads back behind uh, Grizzly River Rapids. And so they set out this big giant cauldron for her in a stage. And so that stage alone blocked half of the the pathway, just having that there. And then Mm -hmm. they were letting everyone stand across. So then there was just a small area for people to walk through. And that so like, but that was the only one where cast members were never yelling like, "Okay, keep the line moving." Yeah, your your Maleficent video that you gave me to put into the vlog, like, I it was hard to find a spot where there wasn't a cast member yelling. Well, and that happened to me with Doctor Facilia. And the thing that I did not care for this was I feel like they almost needed, and I know it's impossible. Where, where, where to do. were those two characters too? Dr. Facilier. Dr. Facilier was back in Hollywood land as well, uh, right next to Monsters, Inc. Monsters, Inc. Monsters, Inc. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The soundstage to the left uh, of it. It's 217 he was in. Um, I'll tell you this. On Thursday and Sunday, the Evil Queen, they actually had a uh, character host moving people along. So I guess they kind of took the bad things that happened on the first night and then corrected them the rest of the night. So I was, there wasn't any bottleneck. And I actually wanted to film her a little bit with Evil Queen and they were like, move along, move along, move along. And I was like, oh, I won't stop for a second. That's the problem. It wasn't bad. Everyone was being respectful who wanted to stop and watch and they still made room mm-hmm. for people to travel through. Yeah. Like we don't live in a world where you need to travel with your group four people across. That's uh, that's a pet peeve of, I think, all of us at any time in a theme park. Oh, yeah. But there was enough room for two people side by side to still walk through without touching anyone. So and that's I love the tree trails. I thought they were excellent. It was a great way to see the characters. But there I there was one time with Maleficent. The line was so backed up and I was like. This can't be that long to see Maleficent. Like I know Where everyone loves Maleficent? her. Maleficent was to the left or to the right of Goofy's plane or the plane. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Side uh, in you know next to Soren and all that. She was all the way in the back. The problem was everyone would not pass up the treats because they had at least like five or six candy stations with each. Yeah. So the lines that were backing up were people waiting for treats. That's what happened and, in the Mad Hatter one too. Yeah. And then once you get to the character, in every circumstance where I got up there, as soon as you get to the characters, no one was stopping and waiting for them. Maybe a couple people, not a lot. Yeah. But I'm like, I want to get up there and see that. And then I'd be standing there and they're like, no, come on, you got to keep it moving. I'm like... This is why I'm in this treat trail. I don't want a single... I live in Florida. I don't need to bring back candy. I don't want a single piece of candy. candy. (laughs) I want want to see the characters that are here. So that's the only thing that I didn't care for. I like that you could see them without meeting them. So it kept... They didn't make it easy for you to be able to... So so there wasn't really a cluster at the Mad Hatter, but there would be like the first... Whatever character you went to, the first treat trunk that was near it was always back and they it i felt like it was maybe and you know the cast members are passing out a lot of candy but it could you know there's i'd look and immediately behind them there's like three or four more trunks and nobody's at them and i'm like i don't need to stop at every one of these so like Mm -hmm. can i just get around you and that's where i felt like people were a little a little more aggressive right there you know Mm -hmm. um and like as if i was cutting them and i'm like i don't i'm not taking away your yeah, candy like, exactly and that leads into my sure. next sorry uh, that, that leads into my next uh complaint with an experience that should be a little bit more free going and that to me is villain's growth which after days of sitting on it i still feel like it's a disappointment not for the technology and the imagery and everything that went into it but it's they you wait in line 20 30 minutes for this walkthrough that then it feels like it would be something that's better off if you get the chance to discover i know you got to spend a little more time in there but like well we were we were definitely forced to swim upstream with it where i feel like it should be a thing like a normal day in the wilderness explorers area where you can bounce around from area to area and you're not led on a path I mean, I, I didn't mind the walking through the path. I think my issue was so so. It was I I definitely know what you're talking about about because I, I got stuck. Um, Morgan, did we walk through together? 
Uh, we did, but y'all went ahead of me because I wanted to stay and watch eats. Okay, each. yeah. So yeah. I was, I was, uh, I was afraid because they kind of they were telling people originally to like move, and so I the first one I'm walking through was like the Frollo area, and I I was like. Um, I, I I didn't even really know what I was looking at to be honest in that one, but I, I was like, oh, candle, spooky. I didn't realize it was the Hunchback. Like, and I was like, oh, this is pretty, you know. And but I it was I was nervous. Like some areas they would rush me along, and then other areas they like, oh, we don't care. So like when I got to Cheshire Cat, I was kind of like, okay, I got to see him, and I know he's gonna disappear, and he disappeared. And then like um, a couple areas they, it was like where they needed to kind of tell people to be like, okay, you can keep going because you've seen everything right now. Cause it was, um, the scar area. I felt like that was a weird, I like, I'm just standing there for a minute for some weird reason. Like, I don't know why it got backed up there, especially because there's a lot of areas where if you do want to just sit, stand and watch, you can just step aside and go over there. But uh, people cluster. About the scar area, the, for the first night it got backed up because I think they were stopping it for the next scene, which was Dr. Facilier's area and the ground. Oh, they didn't want a bunch of people walking yeah. over the projections. But the first night, everybody just kind of walked right through it. Um, the second night I was there, it still got bottlenecked there, and everybody was going through the cave and taking their time doing the hand thing that tells yeah. you which spirit animal you are, which that isn't part of it. That's just there during the day. So I just kind of skipped that and went past it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it always got back up there. So if you see people going through the cave, you don't have to wait behind them. There's yeah. nothing there that isn't offered during the day. I yeah. Um, yeah. For me, I, I, I actually, I, I definitely enjoyed the area a lot. I think, I hope this is something they bring back. Um, I thought like, yeah, the, I mean, you said it too. So it's not like you disagree with the, the lighting and the, everything they did in here was beautiful. And I felt like they used so much of the area. It was really cool. I, I do think it is kind of one of those where it could be a move at your own pace, but it relies on people allowing you to pass them. Yeah. To mm -hmm. me, I, I think the end goal with me where I see, I see the idea behind all the other stuff that's at this party is something like, okay, the tree trails, this is something that is unique and exclusive to this party. To me with what's happening inside the wilderness explorers, explorers <laughs> area for villains Grove that should be something they just have every night. There's yeah, I, there's, thought, I thought that was great, and I'm so I'm I think that would then cause keep, keep less of a bottleneck yeah. on party nights of people saying this is my only time to experience it. There's no reason, in my opinion, why it's there's nothing like that is so cool in there that I'm like, this is why you have to buy your ticket to go to Villains yeah, Grove. Yeah, yeah. It, it could just be a free thing you get any day yeah. you go into it's, the park. It's a nice use of the area. It, yeah. And it's a really cool nighttime thing, thing to see at night. I think it would be cool if they kept it yeah. at night because, I mean, you can't really do a lot of the stuff in there at night anyways. Can't see what you're doing. Exactly. And yeah. during the day, they leave all the candelabras up, all the roses for the, the Queen of Hearts section yeah. up. And I think just for a tip for anybody who's going in the future, um, try to go before the end of the parade because everybody, there's a mad rush. Mm. Um, and the line goes all the way back to basically the entrance of Grand Californian and then comes all the way back to the front of Redwood Creek Challenge. So just try to get there before. Otherwise, it's going to be 30, 45, maybe an hour wait. Um, and yeah, and take your time in there. You don't have to rush. Um, just move over to the side to be yeah. respectful of it. Look, look for every one of the villains in there because that's that's one of those things. They show up mm -hmm. and then they melt and like disappear. Yeah. So, and I think that's mm -hmm. part of where my overall issue is with it is that you do need to take your time going through there to get the most out of it. Uh, you will have to wait in line for it, which I get it. That's life. It's Disney. You wait yeah. in lines, but during a limited time party, waiting in that much of a line and then taking that much time to really fully experience everything. It's for me, if I was to go back, that would be a thing that I would not repeat. I oh. would not go back in there. It's, I think it's something they oh, should I have. Did it every that's the, that's the first thing I would go to. Yeah. yeah. I think they should have it every night and to <laughs> waste uh, to spend a hundred dollars to waste potentially up to an hour of your party time just being in there, I think that you're not. It's not cool enough for that. But I also respect your decision to like it. So uh, something I think we all have a mutual hatred for is oh, okay. villainous. 
Man, I wanted to like this show. And it like it started off and I was like, oh, this is fun. Oogie Boogie is going to tell us the story. I like that setup. And I like that setup because I was thinking, you know what's fun? They could easily use so much of this show and readapt it, like change the, the main story. And the story's got a good message about the little girl and whether she wants to be the villain or the princess. And, you know, what does it mean to be a villain? Why do we like villains and stuff? Interesting concept, but my goodness, uh, the show is one, I feel like way too long. Also, there are a lot of very, and I said it in the vlog, a lot of very questionable choices. Like, I went back and rewatched some of it, and I was just like, the queen part, where like she turns into the hag and she's like, look at all my powers, and then boop, 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 boop weirdo dancing skeleton to like the weirdest music. It was like, Somebody conceived this in the 70s, and they were like, Oogie Boogie Disco, that's going to be the new thing. And I was like, no. Well, I, I, thought, I thought a lot about this on the drive over, because part of this was, you know, I know we were going to not be very positive with this show. So I wanted to think, what what do I believe they could do to make it better? And that really led me to think, like, I... It's very difficult, I think, to make a Halloween show like this, because, like... You know, it's you. They use Ursula and poor unfortunate souls in there, and like, well, we already have that as part of Fantasmic and such, and like, oh, well, they could throw Chernabog I, I did in there like and that, add yeah. that spookiness. Well, we already have him in Fantasmic. Yeah, I and then it's like, well, of course we have to then use Doctor Facilier because why the heck the wouldn't cards. we? The like, cards. and then throwing in Oogie Boogie and you know, as much as I love Nightmare Before Christmas. I am getting very tired of Oogie's song being used well, in every Halloween entertainment. I don't think they have enough to make this I think show. I think they I think they would have. I my problem is you 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 so okay. So especially at Disneyland, especially at Disneyland, people line up for hour I mean look at the 90s night for how long people waited for these rare characters. Mm-hmm. Why not make it like Mad Madam Mim or whatever her name is from like Sword in the Stone and what about uh, Mama Mama uh, Mama's got to oh, know yeah. whatever from Tangled and Mama um, knows best. Lotso and um you you know, like, do some more of these villains that we never see. Where's the Lotso meet yeah. and greet again? You know, like, p- pop out. Stop using those same villains yeah. over and over again. Because, well, for one, Maleficent, we could, we, we in the party already, they're on the float. And we saw Maleficent. Um, you could see Maleficent, the Queen, and whoever. Yeah, the problem is a lot of those villains, like, you do have... You do have Mother Gothel, Gothel. with yeah, there is, uh, yeah. with Tangled, but it, Mother's knows, knows Best isn't a menacing song, well, and that's what they want. So uh, yeah, my the only thing I could come up with to fix a show like this would be to drop the Shelley, the Shelley Mary storyline, Shelley Marie storyline. Sorry, and instead of going with something like that, literally just make it a montage of these are clips of Disney villains at their most evil, mixed with like EDM music yeah. of the villain songs and just yeah, drop the story give us a remix. Yeah. and make it make it just like 10 minutes of entertainment that's where give us yeah give us one solid disney like you loved you love the music from the fireworks show give us one yeah. like remix song like a parade song and just give it give us like what you're saying it's where that's one of the distinctions that i know people always like well you love universal more than disney universal did this method oh, they killed with, it with their the Show. Lagoon show that they have at Halloween Horror Nights, where it took clips from the movies that are featured in it from Halloween Horror Nights, put next to just uh, musical score and yeah, really EDM their upbeat. Themes. Yes, yeah. and they did it that way, and that show works. It's ten minutes. It's shown three times a night. This show, villainous to me, it just doesn't work. Cut out the storyline. Just make it highlight clips of Disney villains with EDM yeah. Disney music. And go for it and make it a small show that's not like, here, stand here for 20 minutes finding the perfect spot and then watching a 20 minute but, show and spending uh, that much time on the party. Just, it's That end is so weird where he breaks into the dancing in the club where he's just like, Oogie Boogie is going to dance. And you're like, I don't understand yeah. any of this. I And I'll be honest, I before we move on to our, our final stuff here, I would say I wouldn't invest any time watching this. I, that's my mm-hmm. honest. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I would. I. I would do it the way I did it. Walk up. I stood yeah. right in the back. I had a perfect view, and, and then that way I can be like, it's not for me, and then walk away. And that's what I meant. Like, don't 
don't stake out a spot. Yeah. Just literally, you don't have to for the show. Show up seconds before it starts, and if you feel like you've got enough of the idea, trust me, it doesn't get better once it gets <laughs> to the end. Leave when you feel like you're ready to. Um, can I say something yeah. about Villainous, if that's okay? Um, so I got to see the media preview, and they specifically said that Shelly Marie wasn't going to talk, and she did talk a little bit in the show. There wasn't, and they said they had a lot to improve on before it was released to the public. I didn't see much, not much change happened over. And then also, Rhino, like the end where you said that yeah. Oogie Boogie is like doing a disco thing, it sounds so close to M- Minions, like when they're doing their dance party at the end, or like at uh, the end of the ride at Universal. Yeah. It sounds just like that. I'm like, yeah. they're calling Boogie me. Fever. Yeah, that's really funny, actually. I didn't even put that together. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Weird that, though. Someone, that okay. was me getting it. <laughs> yeah. Ding. <laughs> uh, and the the final thing I'll just say with I believe all we have left to talk about because I already mentioned we, you mentioned Descendants. We didn't, we didn't enough. really talk about we just the parade I guess right. Yeah, just yeah. frightfully fun parade. Nothing changed with the parade with the exception of adding the Cheshire Cat onto the end of the final float and. Whether or not he belongs, I guess that's anyone's opinion to it. But I thought this parade fit well yeah. in California It's a Adventure. Halloween parade yeah. through and through from beginning to end, I feel yeah. like. I feel like it's definitely – it's still a not-miss yeah. event during this party. It is – if if – even if you think you don't love parades, I think that it's think something that you have to see. Yeah. I actually downloaded the song afterwards because it's it uses that song that I always ask you. I've been asking you since I've worked here. Every time we go in, I'm like, does anyone know what the song is? The one where they're like, Halloween, Halloween, everybody. It's called It's <laughs> Halloween dash low dash ween or low ween or something like that. It's from Disneyland Paris. I guess it's from their Halloween thing <laughs> and we've remixed it or whatever. I know, a really have it downloaded. catchy song. Like, I personally do love Boo to You, but the Halloween Parade song is really good. Yeah. I wish the parade was, like, one or two more floats longer. I, I, just, yeah. I wish there was a little bit more, because I feel like it's, I think it's, like, five floats, and that's it. Yeah. Oh, I no, there, and I think there's still room for it to be a little longer and be keep the Halloween spirit in it. Like one of the things I would love to see is there's the classic, um, there's the classic Disney Halloween short trick or treat with Huey, Dewey and Louie and the witch. And like, yeah, why can't they make these costumes and add that as a float to this parade? Why can't, why can't they make a float more with like the skeleton dance or so there, there is room. They could improve it, but at the same time too, it's, you know, I, I think it's still what you have there. It's solid. So especially adding on once they added the Headless Horseman to be a part of it, too. Like yeah, that's it's, cool. He's got his own little show. That's yeah. what I like. To yeah. think about when it was just the Mickey's Halloween Cavalcade years and years and years ago, the first one I saw that was, I think, three floats, and that was it, oh, to where it is now. It's already come a long way. Yeah. And they could make it better, but I think it's pretty pretty awesome as it is so i think yeah just uh just wrapping that all up here i I think we can firmly say that halloween party even though it's sold out this year oogie boogie bash it's something i think you should go to next year oh plans for it yeah yeah don't sleep on these tickets get them yeah and i tickets took a long time to sell out this year i had thought maybe even it was possible that Disney just capped them to make sure the party looked like it sold out to make it look more popular than it is. I still don't know that that's not true, but at the same time, too, I think now that people have seen what it's like this year, I don't want it any busier. It's yeah. they're not gonna they're not going to um, they're they're not going to last as long next time around. I think they're going to go a lot quicker. And you're right, it was, Morgan did say it got a little busier, but I thought the crowd levels were perfect. Yeah, and you just like we said. As long as you had ideas about what you wanted to do and made a plan, then I think you could have got mm-hmm. pretty much everything done without any issues at all. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that is that. So that was our little recap of Oogie Boogie Bash. Like I said, we'll have plenty more to talk about. So we didn't even get to Halloween time in general on this episode. Our thoughts on it. Morgan already shared hers a couple weeks ago. So we have lots more to come from the Halloween season at Disneyland Resort. But that's going to be it for this show and uh, it for us this week. So thank you so much, Morgan, for tuning in and uh, being a part of this. And she didn't tune in. She, she helped out. 
thanks for helping out. Hey, guys, thanks for being in this room, too. And that's going to do it for us this week. We'll see you again next week. But until then, remember, as Tom Bell always says, well, he doesn't get a say because he couldn't show up to this show. So we'll see you next week. He does always say that. (laughs) 